Okay, we are going to learn Kirchhoff's voltage law, or in fact they call it Kirchhoff's loop law, and Kirchhoff's loop rule, and Kirchhoff's junction rule. Essentially, you guys learned how to simplify circuits. You simplify circuits by taking the series resistors and adding them together, and taking the parallel resistors and doing the parallel resistance formula and combining them. But unfortunately, you can only do that for a small percentage of electrical circuits. Most electrical circuits are too complicated for that process to work, for that simplification process to work. So when you become electrical engineers, you will learn a bunch of other procedures for simplifying circuits. One procedure is the one we're going to learn today, Kirchhoff's junction and loop rule. Another simplification pr procedure is you get a Thevenin <laughs> equivalent of the circuit or a Norton equivalent of the circuit, which I'm not going to teach you and you guys aren't going to learn. And, and there's other things even more complicated than those that all together make it possible for you to simplify electrical circuits. But today, all this happening is Kirchhoff's laws. So here we go. You guys got the sheet, right? Let me describe what Kirchhoff's rules are. Oh, thank you for doing the camera thing. Um, number one, Kirchhoff's junction rule. It's an expression of conservation of charge. That is, charge is never gained or lost. And it says, the total current directed into a junction must equal the total current directed out of the junction. So look at that little drawing there. Do you see that you have a 7 amp current going into the junction? And then that 7 amp current is splitting into two smaller currents? One of the currents, 5 amps. What is the other current? 2 amps, right? Well, we've already been doing that, but what you've been doing has a name. It's called Kirchhoff's Junction Rule. Next, we got Kirchhoff's Loop Rule, which is an expression of conservation of energy. For a closed circuit loop, the total of all the potential, that is voltage, rises is the same as the total of all the potential drops. And so I gave you an incredibly simple circuit to, to uh, demonstrate this. You know, I got a, uh, 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 uh. so, so this is a 15 volt battery. This is a 10 ohm resistor. This is a 20 ohm resistor. Hey, you guys, oops. You guys tell me, what's the current coming out of that battery? What? No. What's the current coming out of the battery? Yeah, 0.5. You were right. I mean, 0.66 was right, except you did your math wrong. So you guys remember that. Yeah, 0.5 amps coming out of the battery. I got 30 ohms divided by 15 volts. Okay? So this 0.5 amps is going into this 10 ohm resistor. And by virtue of passing through the resistor, this current is losing electrical potential energy. It's giving it up to do work, maybe to rotate a motor or heat up some heating element or, or you know, light a light, whatever this current is doing, it's losing energy. So when the current enters this resistor, it has a higher electric potential, that is more energy per coulomb, than when it leaves, because it gives up a bunch of its energy. And the amount of energy it gives up is given by Ohm's law, IR, IR. So let's say five volt drop. And then this 0.5 amps of current continues on and gives up a bunch of energy to that 20 ohm, 0.5 times 20, which is 10 volts. Well, I want you to see that in my current doing this loop, it gained 15 joules of energy per coulomb, and then it lost 15 joules per coulomb. It lost 15 volts. And that's the way it is. That's conservation of energy. Whatever energy this charge gains, it has to lose. Because it can't end up with energy. It can't, you know, you can't make or create or lose energy. And this would be true for this loop. Even if my, you know, even if my uh, circuit was more complicated, maybe even if I had a battery here and, and another battery here, it, it doesn't matter what I do for my circuit, in this particular loop, whatever voltage rise there is, is balanced by the voltage drops, okay? No, no matter what else is happening with the circuit. And that's what Kirchhoff's loop rule says. For any particular closed circuit loop, the voltage rises has to be equal to the voltage drops. Okay. One more thing I want to remind you of. When current enters a resistor, 
it loses energy. So there's always going to be a voltage drop in the direction of the current. But batteries, th those don't depend on current. A battery is inviolate. You know, a, a battery just says, hey, this terminal's 15 volts larger, higher than this terminal, and I don't care what's going on around me. A battery always makes sure that the positive terminal is however many volts it is higher than the lower terminal. But the, but the, bat, the resistor is a different story. The voltage drop across the resistor is determined by the direction of the current. Okay, well, hey, it's time to do example number one. Let's go ahead and do Kirchhoff's loop rule. And I'm going to do this for you, and then you guys are going to do example two on your own. Here comes example number one. Okay, there's my circuit. We're going to do the four steps for doing these sorts of Kirchhoff's laws problems. Step one, for each loop, choose a direction of current. Sometimes you'll be choosing between clockwise and counterclockwise. Sometimes the circuit is so complicated that you can only choose like up or down or left or right. But either way, you must choose a direction of current and I need you to actually put that on your drawing. So look at this circuit. What's the direction of current you would like? Should my current be going this way or should my current be going in the counterclockwise direction? What do you say, Logan? Okay, Logan says clockwise. How many people agree with him clockwise? Okay, great. Great. I'm going to make it counterclockwise. <laughs> Just because. Oh, Logan, by the way, why are you choosing clockwise? Because that's the way I see it going, like every problem you've done. Oh, okay. There's actually a better reason. Why, why is it that the current, you know, frankly, I can tell in an instant that the current should be going clockwise? Tell me, what is it about this, this circuit that tells me current's going to go clockwise? Yeah, Logan again. No, no, but good thinking. Someone else tell me. Yes, uh, Fatima. Um, the voltage of the 24 volt battery is higher than the 6 volt battery? Yeah. Do you see the 24 volt battery is going to give me an electromotive force to push current that way, clockwise. The 6 volt is going to give me an electromotive force to push current counterclockwise. But hey, this guy's bigger than that guy. You guys okay with that? So I know it's going to be clockwise, but, but I'm going to choose counterclockwise just because. So that's step one. Choose a direction of current and mark it on your drawing. Step two, label the resistors with pluses and minuses to show the direction of the voltage drop. <coughs> Look at this 12 ohm resistor. Because current is coming from the right, entering the 12, volt, 12 ohm resistor here and exiting there, I hope everyone sees that my voltage drop is going to be like this. You guys okay with that? current is going to enter the resistor with more electrical potential energy per unit charge than it's going to exit the resistor with because it gives up a bunch of its energy to light the light or turn the motor or do whatever it's doing. So there's my voltage drop. Come here, down here, look at the 8 ohm. Because the current is flowing this way, I hope you see that the voltage drop on this 8 ohm is going to be like this. Boom, boom. Them, are you guys okay with that, with my labeling of the voltage drops? And I gotta tell you right now, you must label your drawing. You must give me the direction of current on your drawing. You must label the pluses and minuses on the resistors of your drawing. In the same way, remember when we used to do free body diagrams? And the way you did your free body diagram completely informed what your equations, your F equals MA equations were? Well, it's the same thing here. The equations you're going to write are entirely determined by how you've marked up your drawing. So you must be really accurate in the way you mark up your drawing. So I've just done step two. Label the resistors with plus and minus to show the direction of voltage drop. I've done it. Step four. I, I should have, I got it in the wrong order. Step four should come next, or maybe I copied this from some book or something, but step four should really come next. For each resistor, I can get the voltage drop of each resistor, right? Look at this resistor. I know the current. You know what the current is? I. I'm going to call the current I. So do you see that the voltage drop across this resistor 
current I, resistance 12 ohms, the voltage is going to be 12 ohms times I, right, IR. So that's the voltage drop across that resistor. I hope you see that the voltage drop across this resistor is going to be 8 ohms times I. That's the voltage drop across that resistor. Now you're going to get to the point where you probably aren't going to need to write that in, but I just want to remind you, I want to really emphasize that the voltage drop is current times resistance. Now we go step three. Set the voltage drops equal to the voltage rises in, in an equation. So here's what I'm going to do. Okay. The voltage drops have to equal the voltage rises. And I'm going to go around the loop. I'm going to have my little walking man. And maybe my walking man starts here at point A. I don't know. But I'm going to have a walking man. And he is going to walk around the loop. And as he walks around the loop, I had a student last period who I, I drew this little walking man, and then we talked a little, and then after a while he said, Mr. Shana, what are those red things? So I just want to tell you again, they are a walking man. Okay? And as my walking man goes around the loop, he's going to encounter voltage drops and voltage rises. The voltage drops are going to go on the left side of this equation, and the voltage rises will go on the right side of the equation. Let's follow our little red walking man. He walkie, walkie, walkies. He gets here. Tell me, is this a voltage drop or a voltage rise as he's going from left to right? How many people say it's a voltage rise? Hey, good for you guys. I want to remind you, if you've got a hill, okay, and I don't know, is, that, is the camera showing this? Okay, if you've got a hill and you've got a man walking this way, he's going to say, hey, that's a rise. This guy, if he's walking this way, he's going to say, no, it's a fall. Well, I mean, they're both right. It just depends what direction you're coming from, right? Well, it's the same thing here. If he's going from negative to positive, that's a voltage rise. Yes, Noel? Why are the walking men going the opposite direction of the current? Oh, just because I randomly chose clockwise. Would you have preferred counterclockwise? I just wondered if there was a reason why they were opposite. No, I just, it's just to do step three, start at point A, proceed clockwise or counterclockwise, it doesn't matter. So I just went clockwise just because that's the way I roll. I don't know. But if you wanted to go counterclockwise, be my guest. You'll get the same equation, it's just the two sides of the equation symbol will be reversed. Okay, so that's, that's a voltage rise. So that's 12 ohms times I. My little walking man continues, tell me the 6 volt, is that a voltage rise or a voltage drop? Drop. drop. Hope you see it's a drop because he's going from positive to negative. Now he's like this guy. So that's a drop. So I can put 6 volts right there. Now my little walking man continues along his way. Right there, is that a voltage drop or a voltage rise? Yeah. It's a rise. <coughs> and as he continues on, now he hits this 24 volt. And tell me, is that a volt, is a rise or a drop? He's hitting negative, and then he's getting to positive. Wow. That's a rise. So that's going to be over here, 24 volts. And then finally, he gets back to point A, and he's completed the loop. He, he completed the loop, and all the voltage drops has to equal all the voltage rises. Well, let's go ahead and solve for I. So I've got negative 15 volts equals uh, 20 ohms times I. And so I've got negative 18 volts over 20 ohms equals I, which ends up equaling negative 0.9 amps. Yay. Tell me, what is the meaning of my current being negative? Hmm. What's that, Robin? It means it's going to the left. Thank you. It means I guessed wrong. I guessed that the current would be going to the right, but I guessed wrong. The current is actually going to the left. That is, the current should be going clockwise, as Logan predicted. I decided to go against him, and I went counterclockwise, and I was wrong. 
So you don't even have to stress about choosing the correct direction of your current. If you choose wrong, who cares? You'll get a negative answer which tells you you chose wrong. You see that? So a negative answer means you guessed wrong. You guessed wrong on the direction of the current. And so the answer is I equals 0.9 amps clockwise. Any questions or issues on this? Then please turn the sheet over and I'd like everyone to do example two. Go ahead and label the direction of your current, label the voltage drops and rises on your resistors, and then do your Kirchhoff's uh, uh, loop rule equation. Good luck. And I will walk around and help, help you. walk around and make sure you guys are doing steps one and two correct. Here's the problem. If your current is going that way, then your voltage drop on the 30 ohm is wrong. And I don't even see a voltage drop on the 10 or the 20 ohm. plus or minus on that resistor and that resistor and that resistor. Yeah, yeah, I don't want you just hauling off and doing equations. You must label plus or minus on your resistors. Are okay. you going to get wrong answers? Good. Good. Step one and step two are correct. Oh, people are getting answers now. Good, that's correct. Okay. Okay. That's, that's what you have is correct. And you got a negative, which means you guessed wrong. Um, everything you did here is perfect. Good job, Mark. 
what did you get? Okay. Um, that should be a 60. So something went wrong somehow. Because that answer is actually 0.05. It's 0.05. Yeah. Sorry. Five. What do you mean? 0.05. Why? Oh, you're just bad at math. Because you, you did your physics did fine. Bad Rogers. math. Go ahead. Thank you for not sure. Yeah, what you if did you make a mistake math. with Roger? Wow, I'm listing an entire okay, 60 yeah. ohm resistor. Mm -hmm. well, I'm looking at you did now. bad math. Three over. Oh, wait, that should be three over 60. Three over 60. Yeah, because yeah, you got 20, 10, and 30. That makes a grand total of 60. Um, Gavin did bad math. I did better math. Mr. Shane Gavin did very bad math. Good math. Yeah, no. Got it. no, he's having. <laughs> oh. Yes, you can try going this total is 60. Don't ever change. Four thirds of that is 60. Oh, wait, wait, wait. So, what? So, you guys are plus 20 plus 30. Yeah, so right there. Okay. Okay. Yeah, what I'm looking at here. Are they in parallel? No. You're crazy. I'm not crazy. You're crazy. May I show you something? If, if you're going to have your current going this way, then this is correct. But this should be plus minus. Because your current is only going to have a higher electric potential when it enters a resistor versus when it exits. And the same thing here. This should be plus minus. Because your current is entering there and exiting. Yeah, you got a label. You got a label plus and minus on your resistors. What did I do? Wow, I think it's even better. Okay, your steps one and two are correct. So is Gavin okay now? No. What? I'll just watch you do it. Well, no, no, no. Here. So which way is your current going? Counterclockwise? Yeah, it's going counterclockwise. Okay. So that's plus and that's minus. That's plus minus. Yeah. Plus minus. Okay, good. So now we're, we're starting at A. And did you go clockwise or counterclockwise to do your rises and falls? I did not do rises and falls. Well, yeah, you got to start at A and go, okay, that's, well, I, I can't tell. Which is positive and which is negative for that title? Negative. Okay, okay, then if you start at A, that's a rise, then 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 that's a fall. Okay, so. Do whatever you need to do. Rise, rise. I'm trying to drink real quick. Oh, did you give me back a second? Yes, it's number three. <laughs> Chris, are you still Mr. Shana's calculator too? Yes. Mr. Shana, you have what? two thieves in this classroom. What? Yeah. Who? Chris and Gavin. What? No. What did they thieve? Your calculators. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, brought it, I brought it back. You brought it back. Chris also brought it back. <laughs> but he didn't put it back. Yeah, 
Yeah. All right, you guys. Let's let's take a look at this, and then we'll do example number four. I'm going to show you example number four, and then you guys will do example number three. Okay. This guy, first of all, I've got to define a direction of current, okay? I'm going to be smart about it. I can <laughs> tell visually, just, you know, intuitively that I've got an electromotive force of 9 volts clockwise and 12 volts counterclockwise, so I know the current's going to be counterclockwise. So I'm just going to do it counterclockwise, okay? So that's my current, counterclockwise, and I'll call the current I. I hope you see that because the current is counterclockwise, it's entering here and exiting here for the 30 ohms, so that's plus and minus. It's entering here and exiting there, that's plus and minus. Entering here, exiting there, that's plus and minus. So are you guys okay with the way I've labeled the plus and minus on my resistors? You must do that. Do not do, I, I have one student who actually hauled off and was writing down equations without ever labeling pluses and minuses on the resistors. You'll never get right answers if you don't label the plus or minuses on the resistors. It won't happen for you. Now, if you want, you can label the voltages. This will be 10i, this will be 20i, and this will be 30i, right? Because voltage is current times resistance. So if you want to label it, that's fine. I sometimes forget to label it because I actually just do it in my head as I write down the equation. But that's, that's okay. Now let's go ahead and do our uh, Kirchhoff's loop rule, which means the voltage drops are going to be equal to the voltage rises. Okay. So I'm going to start at a point. I'll start here at point A. Tell me, would you like me to go clockwise or counterclockwise? Clockwise. Okay. Anyone want me to go counterclockwise? Earl? Okay, that's good enough. <laughs> I'm going to go counterclockwise because it doesn't <laughs> matter, right? So I'm going to start with A, and my little walking man is now going to go counterclockwise. If you don't mind, I'm going to just draw one walking man. I won't draw several walking men. So here's my walking man. He's going that way, and he's going to go counterclockwise until he gets back to point A. He walky, 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 and he gets to here. I hope you see that that's a voltage rise, 12 volts. It's negative, and he gets to positive. That's a voltage rise, 12 volts. He continues his walkie, and he gets to here. This is a voltage drop, because he's going from positive to negative, and that voltage drop is 30i. Mm -hmm. Then he keeps walking, and he gets to here. This is a voltage drop, 6 volts. He keeps walking. This is a voltage drop, that's 20i. And then he keeps walking, that's another voltage drop, 3 volts. And then finally that guy, 10i. So I'm sorry I'm writing so small, <laughs> but that's what you got. You got 12 volts on one side and you got everything else on the other. Now if you'd gone clockwise, then it would look the same, it would just be flipped. You'd have 12 volts on the left and everything else on the right. You see it doesn't matter whether you go clockwise or counterclockwise. Well let's go ahead, I've got 10, 20, and 30, so that makes 60i, and I got 3 volts subtracted from 9 volts, which gives, no wait, no I got 6 volts. 3 and 6 subtracted from 12 volts gets me 3 volts. And so my I is going to be 3 uh, over 60, which is 0.05 amps. You'll notice it's positive, so I guessed correct on the direction of the current. So it's going to be counterclockwise. H how many people ended up getting 0.05? Okay, good, many of you. Any questions or issues on this? Well then, hey, it's time to do example four. I'm going to show you example four now. Okay.
What makes example four interesting is it's got multiple loops now. When I only had one current to deal with, it was really easy. I just had one variable. But now that I have multiple loops, I have multiple currents. But I'm still going to follow the steps, just like it says in the, on the sheet there. Step one, choose a direction <laughs> of current. Well, what direction of current would you like to have coming out of the battery? How are you thinking left? You guys okay with that? Okay, so I'm going to call that current going this direction. But the thing is, this current is going to split up into two different currents. So I can't just have one variable, I, because I have multiple currents. So this current I'm going to call I1, okay? And then at this junction, this current is going to split into two different currents. I'm going to call this current I2 and I'll call this current I3. Are you okay with that? I2 and I3. Or you could have gone I3 and I2, it didn't matter. I just had to think of names. And then the I2 and the I3 are going to come back together and come back to I1, and we know it has to be I1 because if I1 exits the battery, I1 has to come back to the battery. How many equations, if I want to find I1, I2, and I3, how many equations am I going to need? Three. three equations. i got three unknowns. I need three equations. And the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to use a Kirchhoff's junction rule and then two Kirchhoff loop rule equations. Let's go for it. First, a Kirchhoff junction rule. Here's my junction right here. I want to remind you it's the currents into the junction has to equal the sum of the currents out of the junction. What equation should I write for this? How many people agree with Fatima? It's I1 equals I2 plus I3. Thousimani. What? Thousimani. Oh, I thought it was Fatima. <laughs> it was kind of. But Imani, good job. <laughs> How many people agree that maybe if I change it? Because no one agreed with Fatima. How many people agree with Imani that it's I1 <laughs> equals I2 plus I3? Okay, there you go. That's, that's the name of that. Everyone agrees with Imani. Okay, yeah. So I got I1 equals I2 plus I3. Yay, that's one of my equations. Now, I've got another junction. This is a junction here where I've got three or more <laughs> currents coming together. Does it help me at all to use that junction to do a Kirchhoff junction rule? Why not? Noel, you shake your head. Why not? Yeah, thank you. It'll be exact same. So it's not going to do me any good. So don't write it down. It doesn't help. So let's go ahead and do a Kirchhoff loop rule now. Which loop would you like to choose? How many loops do I have? How many people say I have two loops? Okay, great. Well, actually, I don't have two loops. How many do I actually have? Not one. Have you ever seen those things where someone gives you something like this and, and they say, like, how many squares do I have? And you have five, right? Yeah. So you guys okay that, that, that I have three loops, actually? I've got this bottom loop, I've got this top loop, and then I've got this entire loop. So I've got three to choose from, but I'm going to choose the bottom loop and the top loop. I'm not going to choose the entire loop. Okay, so here we go. Um, I'm going to choose the bottom loop. Okay, that means I, I need to get my pluses and minuses up there. Remember, you must do step two. You must label your resistors pluses and minuses or you will not get right answers. So I hope you see I1 is entering and exiting the 8 ohm. So that's going to be a plus and that's going to be a minus. Are you okay that I3 is entering and exiting the 6 ohm? So this is going to be a plus and this is going to be a minus. And the I2 is entering and exiting the 12 ohm right there. So I've labeled the pluses and minuses. If I want to, I could also label the V equals IR voltages. The voltage here is going to be 8 ohms times I1. The voltage here is going to be 6 ohms times I3. 
YI3, because that's the current going through it. This voltage here is going to be 12 ohms times I2. If you want to label it, that's fine. If not, you can just do it in your head. Just be aware that the voltage is always going to be current times resistance. Okay, let's get out of our bottom loop. This guy, I'll start here at point A and I'll go clockwise. Let's get our voltage rises and all our voltage drops. Put the drops on the left side, put the rises on the right. As my walking man goes clockwise, do you see that this is a voltage drop? 6 ohms times I3. 6 ohms times I3. He continues to walk, and this is a drop as well. 8 ohms times I1. And then he continues on his way, and this is a voltage rise. 24 volts. And then he gets back to point A. Are you okay with that equation for the bottom loop? Yes. I've got two equations. I need one more. I'm going to use the top loop. I'm not going to use the entire loop. Okay. Here comes the top loop. I'll start anywhere. It doesn't matter. I'll, I'll start right here. We'll call this point B. And I'm going to go clockwise for just the top loop. Do you see that I've got a voltage drop there? This is a voltage drop, so it'll be 12 ohms times I2. And then I got a voltage rise here, 6 ohms times I3. I now have three equations with three unknowns, and I can solve for I1, I2, and I3. Any questions on what I've done so far? <coughs> so let me give you insight into the AP exam. On the AP exam, they never have you solving three equations with three unknowns. I'm going to teach you how. Tomorrow I'm going to show you how to do it with matrices. All they require is that you be able to get the equations. So they're actually <coughs> going to give you, like they'll give you a drawing and they'll say which of the following equations is an example of Kirchhoff's loop rule and then one of them will be that guy and you'll go, oh, there it is. You see what I mean? That's what they'll do on the AP exam. So for the AP exam, this is enough. On my exam, when I give you something like this, I'll say, get me the currents and that'll be extra credit. Because I'm now going to go through the process of solving for I1, I2, and I3. Here it comes. Are you ready? And it's going to be substitution. Are you okay that 2I2 equals I3? I get that from that. Yeah. And now I'm going to plug this into here to get rid of I2. So now plugging into there, into the top equation, I get I1 equals, uh, well, I'm sorry, I'm going to get rid of I3. I1 equals I2 plus 2I2. Two Are you okay with that? I took away the I3 and put 2I2 two in there, which means I1 equals 3I2. Now, I'm going to plug both of these into here. That is, I'm going to have 8 times 3I2 plus 6 times 2I2 equals 24 volts. So I got 24 plus 12 is 36. 36 divided by 24 divided by 36 is 2 thirds. And I get I2 equals 2 thirds of an amp. So you are, if you want to, you can solve these using substitution. You know, now I can find what I1 is. I1 is equal to 3 times 2 thirds of an amp, which is equal to 2 amps. And then I3 is going to be 2 times 2 thirds of an amp, which is 4 thirds of an amp. Okay. It is time for us to do example three together. So that it's easy for me to check you guys, 
we're going to define the same current for I, for example, three together. And then I'm going to walk around and help you if you need it. Here's example three. Okay, this is 10 ohms, <coughs> 20 ohms, 30 ohms. Okay. Step one, define the direction of currents. Let's vote. You ready? The current going through this resistor, because there's three currents for me to deal with, right? Because I've got two junctions. I've got this, this junction and that junction. So I've got three currents, that current, that current, and that current. So this current here, do you want to define it as up or down? How many people say they want the current through the 10 ohm to be up? How many people say they want it to be down? Well, oh, the ups win. So the current, and I'm going to call this I1, is going up. So that's I1 going up. Tell me, the current through the 20 ohm, do you want it to be up or down? down. How many people say the current through the 20 ohm is up? How many people say down? All right, let's define it down. So I'm going to call this current I2. The current going through the 30 ohm, you want it to be up or down? How many people say up? No, one, one brave soul. How many people say down? Many of you. Okay, so let's go down. Okay. Okay, please label your resistors, pluses and minuses, and then do a Kirchhoff junction rule and two Kirchhoff loop rules, and let's see how it goes for you guys. Good luck. Go ahead and label your resistors. Okay. Now you're ready to do Kirchhoff's junction rule and Kirchhoff's uh, current laws. Kirchhoff's, I mean, Kirchhoff's. <laughs> Kirchhoff's junction rule. <laughs> <laughs> Say Kirchhoff's junction rule really fast, 10 times. <laughs> I2 plus I3 is correct. You're one third of the way there. Yay. Now you're ready to do your loop rules. Good. Oh, you're so smart. You know that it is this time. Good. Same with you. Yeah, that's it, man. That's, that's all there is to it. drops on one side and all the rises on the other and you got a winner.
Class is so small. Let's try it. Let's try it. Okay. Okay, that's correct. That. Now, here for the left loop, as you go around, there's a drop, there's a rise, but then this is a drop. So the, this guy and this guy should be on the same side of the equation. The left loop. So check your right loop to make sure you didn't mess that up either. This is correct, and that's correct. And did you do the right loop? Yeah. So you got a you got a drop, and then a rise, and then a drop. So so this isn't correct. The 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 20 ohms times i2, which is a drop, has to be on the same side of the equation as the 10 volts, which is also a drop. Yeah, here's your junction rule. What am I trying to do? Hmm? Yeah, you kind of label that drawing. You can't so figure out the current. There's no chance you're getting the right answer. Sheesh, Gabby. Didn't you pay attention? I found the thing that one of them. Sheesh. Yeah, you can't really figure out what the current is. Isn't that Good luck, Gavin. Okay, your, your junction rule is correct. This Good luck. Guy is correct. <laughs> Unfortunately, this guy is wrong. Because if you it. start at this point and go down, you've got a drop. Yeah, you just watch my cup this way. And a drop. The 10 volt and the 20 ohm times I2 should be on the same side of the equation. Yeah, that, that's correct. And that's correct. And that's correct. So if you were to do three equations with three unknowns, you would win. Yeah, this is great. This is great. This is the right Oh, oh yeah, yeah, this is correct. The right one? Let's say you start there. You see you've got a drop, and then a rise, and then a drop. So the 10 volt and the 20 volt times I'm sorry, I think I have to get better. Yeah. I need to. I don't know. I Did I get an answer? Shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's correct. This unfortunately is wrong. Right. Because if you start to go around, you start to see how the drop is and then rise and then the drop. Yeah. 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 You did the math right for the Okay. I just let me show you the equations. First, we've got Kirchhoff's junction rule, which I'm going to use this junction right here, and that gets me I1 equals I2 plus I3. Virtually everybody I checked had that correct. Any question or issue on the Kirchhoff junction rule? Okay, then let's go ahead and do the left loop. Looking at the left loop, I want to remind you, you're going to start at a point and then go clockwise or counterclockwise. I'm going to start here. I've got a voltage drop, 10 I1. Then I have a voltage rise of 5 volts. And then I've got a voltage drop of 20 I2. Almost everybody I checked was getting that okay. <coughs> The only difficulty people had was on the right loop. I want to just show you on the right loop, if I start here and go this way, do you see that I've got a drop, a rise, and then a drop? My 20 times I2 and my 10 volts, those are both drops. They should be on the same side of the equation, right? I've got 20, 20 times I2 plus 10 volts. Those are both voltage drops as I go around the loop. This is a voltage rise, so it's 30 times I3. So that's it. If you do the right loop, the 20 I2 and the 10 volts should be on the same side of that equation, whether you went clockwise or counterclockwise or whatever. So those are my three equations with three unknowns, and tomorrow I'll show you how to solve them really easily. Today, you're just stuck having to do a process like we did over there. And if you can't do it, you know, just, just be satisfied that you got the equations right. And hope, good luck, you guys. <laughs>